Casey McCracken with the Augusta County Service Authority. I'm our Director of Information Technology. I've really worked for the Authority for coming up on 15 years full time. I've had a lot of different roles with the Authority. I've always been the IT guy, but I've been part of customer service. I've been part of meters, our GIS department. Uh, just really anywhere that I think that there's data and information, uh, I've been there. So it's been a been a really fun journey. We serve the citizens of Augusta County. Augusta County is the second largest county in Virginia in terms of area, definitely not population. So we're still a fairly rural county. Uh, we're actually very, very spread out. We have 10 separate water systems that we run. Uh, they range from really small little communities, less than 50 people, up to thousands uh, with some industrial customers in our larger areas. So there's lots of interesting challenges that we have, but it's definitely a, a great place to be and a great place to live. really blessed in Augusta County that we do have lots of water, uh, unlike some of our neighbors. So we're really fortunate there to be able to provide it to our citizens. I think more as a struggle that we had is really just with personnel in terms of we're a really small utility, only 117 people, but we cover this huge area and it's just a lot of drive time. Uh, when we go out to some of our small communities, it can be an hour's drive just to get out there. Maybe you fix one problem or if you're just gonna read a couple meters, and then come back. So we really had to use technology to be as efficient as possible to, to kind of take care of our ratepayers. I think a lot of our customers, they are interested in conserving. Uh, you know, like I say, we've, we've got plenty of water, but that doesn't mean that's always gonna be the case. So whenever we can let our customers know, hey, here's a way to save. I think of course, they very much appreciate the environmental impact uh, we've done a lot in terms of source water protection to really protect our wells and um, you know keep our water as clean as possible. Uh, but then they also just enjoy being able to see, hey, wait a minute, you know if I do these couple efficiency gains, I can save myself some money. And that's people love that. So yeah, it's really you know kind of a double bang for their buck in terms of we can protect the environment and, and keep things clean and great for future generations as well as save a few dollars. I think some of the challenges that we have really with the with the area and how spread out we are. Uh, originally, we changed our meters out late 90s, early 2000s. And at that point, we went to a touch read system, uh, which was a big gain for efficiency for us. But we still have to visit every single meter box to be able to pull those reads for billing. Uh, and we bill every other month or, or bi-monthly for billing. So, you know, it's just a lot of man hours that you're you're in the vehicles, you're driving out to a to potentially a small community. Uh, what we were seeing really, you know, even though we put those meters in in 90s or 2000s, the read system itself was actually failing for us. Uh, what we were seeing was water intrusion getting into those registers and it would corrupt those reads or the electronics in them. So that instead of being touch read, we were unfortunately kind of being left with direct read meters. So the guys are having to go back, they have to flip lids, you know, wade through the water and the spiders and the, the gross stuff to be able to pull a read that you can barely see and type it into their handhelds. So it was just a lot of time that was going into it, a lot of effort uh, and a lot of questions of, hey, did I read that right? Was that a, a seven? Is that an eight? What, what is this? Um, and we were just really seeing some, some losses in terms of efficiency. Uh, and how long it was taken just to, to have reads uh, approving a lot more overtime. And that really kind of drove us to, to want a system where we said, hey, you know, can we get these reads back in the office automatically? Um, can we see improvements in terms of safety? Uh, there's, you know, there's, there were lots of benefits that we really saw to be able to, to upgrade our read system. So we looked at a lot of different options. Uh, we demoed multiple meter vendors, uh, tried out some, some different options. Of course, we could have stayed with TouchRead. It's the kind of cheapest and easiest option. Uh, we looked at drive-by in terms of putting in endpoints and then having our trucks drive around to collect those reads, uh, possibly once a month, uh, kind of once a month for leak detection and then once a month actually for billing to start giving our customers some more info. 
and then of course full cellular solution. Uh, it's you know we knew that it was going to be more expensive. We did a lot of, of sales work with our board. Uh, we actually for them before we really even issued our, our bidding documents, um, we bought a couple pilot meters and we, we piloted a drive by, saw kind of how that did, but then we piloted the cellular solution and we kind of rolled the dice and we actually put it on several of our board members who are, who are water customers, signed them up for the website, signed them up for the app and said, hey, try this thing out, see what you think. Um, we got really, really lucky. And I think two of our board members had leaks uh, so one, I think it was in his basement and he was a very vocal member of our board. So he came back and said, Hey, you know, you, you guys pointed this leak out to me, you know, save me some money. That was fantastic. When we went to get approval from our board and, you know, you're asking for lots and lots of money. Um, we actually did the hybrid solution is what we proposed in terms of we use drive-by in our dense areas uh, to, to kind of save staff time, then our outlying areas will go for cellular endpoints. Uh, again, trying to not drive to those small communities. They came back to us and said, hey, you know, is cost the only real limitation on this? Because we see a lot of benefits. We said, yeah, it's, it's all about cost. They said, well, reconsider full cellular. And they actually asked us to go back and relook at it. And that's what we were able to deploy. So when you're on a touch read system, it always seems like the meter is just a little bit too far uh, across the fence. You can't quite reach it. So you're, you're jumping gates, you're jumping over fences, you're climbing on top of hills that uh, it's always right after it rains and you, you hope, please don't fall down the hill, please don't fall down the hill. Um, so being able to go to a cellular solution where those reads just, just kind of come in is was really great. Uh, we've got some communities where the meters are actually in the backyards and you know, the, the world just seems to be getting to be a weirder place. And you can imagine we've got one that's right next to a pool and it's a hot summer day. The kids are out playing in the pool. They've got friends over. Here comes one of our guys, even though he's in full service authority uniform saying, I'm here to read your meter. We just don't know how people are going to react. Of course, you know, we have the pools and other areas that are weird, but you know, being Augusta County, we also have a llama farm and right where the, the water line ends is right in the middle of their field. So one day I went out with the meter techs and my job was to be the llama watcher. And of course the, the meters are right at their gate and they come right up to you and they just stare at you. The meter techs, they hated going in there because it, it's a finicky gate. You got to get in, you got to make sure that the llamas aren't near you. And then, yeah, don't turn your back on them because they, they will come over and they'll, they'll let you know that they're the boss. So being able to take the meter text out of that, that situation and just have the read come in automatically, uh, we, we thought that was huge. A big benefit I think is definitely leak detection. So before we only had one read every two months. And so that meant it's potentially two months before we're able to notify customers about an issue. Uh, it always seemed to happen. I think one of the local Raritan clubs, uh, they run a baseball field. I, I think it was literally the day after we would walk away and read it. Hey, let's have a leak. So for two whole months, it just sits there and wastes water. They get this ginormous bill when we go and read it. And they're like, we're a, we're a nonprofit club. We, we don't have that kind of money. So now with the set of their endpoints, we're able to see, hey, you know, right away, 24 hours of continuous usage, you guys have an issue, um, you know, please go check it. And of course, with, with the app and the website, uh, customers are able to sign up themselves. So at that point, you know, we're able to talk to, to those clubs and of course, all of our customers and say, hey, sign up for the app, set up your own notifications, you can watch your usage. Um, we've had you know, multiple customers that have had issues and it's normally when we can get them to sign up for the app. Um, you know, before there's an issue, nah, keep that stuff away from me. Hey, you've got an issue and you could have jumped on it sooner. What was that about an app you said? It, it was free? Like, yeah, it's free. Just get it right there on your phone. A question I always got when I did customer service, they would, someone would come in and they'll say, hey, why is my bill so high? Um, you know, it's most probably most common customer question anybody gets. 
And when I only had a read from today and two months ago, at best I could kind of make general observations of, well, you know, it's sunnier. Did you do a garden? Uh, did you fill up a pool or something? Where, you know, now I can actually look and say, hey, let's look at some trends. Oh yeah, this one particular day, it's, it's actually kind of high. Oh yeah, we filled up our pool or the kids left the hose running or we had company over. You know, whatever it is, I think it really builds a lot of, of confidence and trust in our customers. I think it, it really helps them feel very informed um, that they're not making as many guesses either in terms of what could have happened. That if someone says, oh, yeah, I fixed a leak on this day, well, we can see it and you know, we can actually see what's happening. Um, when they go to talk to someone, they'll say, yeah, my, my bill's higher. Oh, well, it looks like it started on this particular day at this time. Um, so yeah, they, just having that information, I think, helps them with some confidence. Yeah, so I think some of the kind of the, the cost benefits that we've seen, uh, we've been able to take some of our, our meter staff and transition them into other roles. Uh, one of our folks moved over to be an engineering technician, uh, which has been a great big career advancement for him, uh, which I'm real proud of. Uh, we've been able to pull some of our backflow program, so the cross-connection control, uh, actually into the meter area, and they're starting to take on a lot of those duties in terms of getting things tested, uh, reminding customers, hey, your, your backflow is due. So yeah, we've been able to kind of take other programs that didn't have as many, they didn't have the resources they needed. And now resources are available. So we're able to kind of transfer those over while maintaining our meter staff so that they're available that, you know, if there's a some kind of issue, maybe there's a work order they need to go do for the meter side or set a new service, uh, but maybe someone's out sick, no problem. We still have our folks, they're still all available, still fully trained and super knowledgeable, but they're doing other stuff too. I think sometimes we'll see, because we don't do soft turn-ons uh, and turn-offs in terms of uh, customers moving in and out, but we do have some read-only situations where, for example, I might move out of my apartment and the landlord on the exact same day will say, okay, go ahead and put service in, in Casey's name or in, in the landlord's name, in my name. Um, before we had to roll a truck and you had to go out, okay, let me get my out read, let me get my, my in read. So now we just pull it up on Beacon take the work order, sign it off, say, here you go, here it is, turn it right back over, they're done. Zero truck rolls required. Big picture for us as we were looking to, to change out our meters, we really saw it as a big opportunity to improve customer service. You know, before it was always very kind of clinical in terms of here's your bill, here's your second notice, Here's a tag, we're gonna turn you off. Um, you know, if there was some kind of issue, you just got a, a door tag. Um, and it, we, just, we just didn't have the information available to really help our customers out. Um, and so I think what we saw with, you know, with the, the cellular solution, being able to have all this information available is it really made it possible for us to, to really help customers. been updating our water modeling. Uh, we've got 10 separate systems and we did our largest system, South River, uh, most recently. And instead of only having a, a re single read in thousands from two months ago and trying to kind of convert that into some sort of pattern, especially for our really large industrial customers, now we've got 15 minute interval in single gallons. So you can build a really nice curve. Uh, it kind of helps us with some meter sizing as well. So if you've got a customer that they're thinking, hey, I need a meter that's, that's this size, um, you know, they'll give us, of course, fixture counts, but we can look at similar customers that will say, oh, okay, well, you're a hotel. Well, here's some other hotels, and this is kind of what their usage looks like. Is this kind of in line, or are they asking for something that's way too small or way too large? I look 
back to, to who we are, that we're the service authority, that we're here to provide service to the citizens of the county uh, in the best way possible. We don't want to be uh, a nameless government organization that, you know, you just do what we tell you. We, we really want to work with folks. And that means just being as efficient as possible, trying to keep our rates as low as possible. Um, and, and technology like this, I think it really helps us maximize that efficiency.